So playing almost every looter shooter within the past 10 years, I feel I'm in a good spot to actually give you guys a review based on what most of us are seeking when it comes to a game we can waste hours of our lives on if it's in that looter shooter genre. I played the first Descendant over a 3 day period and probably put around 30-40 to 40 hours into it. It was clearly a very early beta with limits, so mentioning frame rates, stability etc etc I don't think is fair uh, and we were advised before playing that this beta may uh, be a little unstable and that low graphics settings should be how we play. I will mention though, the game only crashed once for me within my entire playthrough. Now what we were allowed to play was actually a decent portion of the game or what seemed like and I do have no doubts this game will hit all the right spots within that Unreal 5 engine. Okay so to start, this is a free to play game coming out as of right now early next year on PlayStation, Xbox and PC via Steam. There is a Steam open beta coming the 20th of this month, the 20th of October. So you guys on PC can check it out for yourselves. Okay, so firstly, I want to tell you guys about the gameplay experience for me. It did feel a lot like Anthem in regards to weapon combat, obviously minus the flying. But you do have a nifty double jump and a greatly implemented grapple hook. And the fact it's gameplay reminded me of Anthem, this isn't a bad thing as Anthem's gameplay was actually very very good, that was the least of Anthem's problems. So the first Descendant actually feels pretty solid. Watching the trailers prior to actually playing the game, I had a feeling weapons may have been pushed slightly to the side to make way for all of the abilities on offer within this game, but that really isn't how it is. The balance between weapons and abilities is actually great, both are as important as each other. So weapon combat felt great, again it reminded me a lot of Anthem with a slice of Outriders to it. Weapons felt sharp, on point, really balanced besides hand cannons which were brutal. But overall, nothing really jumped out to me as a problem here. The abilities on offer felt absolutely great within this beta and the amount of characters in natural beta and possibly even more within the full game, there is so much to do and experience here guys with a variety of different playstyles that will be on offer. Now each character has 4 abilities and these abilities can be leveled up and expanded on. Now there wasn't any kind of skill tree as I could see, but there are many many additions to your character you can add via a system called runes, which do change your game build wise. And to be honest it's a system which is big, very big, millions of different builds are possible here people. The beta had 10 different characters within it like I said, but at release I'm certain there will be more. It does say at that character select screen, 10 of 100. But having 100 different characters on release is a little overkill in my opinion and would no doubt take away from other aspects of the game. So character progression, leveling and builds. This is something I know many of us look for in a game like this. And well, this game isn't sure of it. Your character has 3 weapon slots with you being able to use any weapon in any slot, no limits there. If you do use 3 hand cannons though for instance, keep in mind ammo. Ammo will be shared across all 3 weapons. Now there are a variety of different weapon types in the game, assault rifles, tactical rifles, beam rifles, launchers, hand cannons, handguns, shotguns, snipers, scouts and no doubt even more I can't think of off the top of my head. Now what's important here are the rarities. We will go with rares being blue, epics being purple and legendary especially being that classic yellow orange colour. Besides weapons though, within the beta almost every piece of equipment you could loot dropped in the 3 different variants, rare, epic and legendary. Weapons I feel will be in the full game, but within the beta there wasn't absolutely any of them I could see that were of that legendary rarity, but I do believe there will be more of an end game reward or just a much rarer one. So with weapons we also have weapon runes which massively affect the way in which a weapon can not only work but also has said weapon can assist you as you play. Runes are that system I was talking about which can equate to a really unique and massively diverse build system. So as you can see here, runes on the left hand side affect individual weapon types and what rune mod is applied here affects the weapon it represents. And what can be applied here obviously gets better as you play and level up giving you the benefits of being able to use better runes but not only that, the benefit of using more of said better runes at the same time. 
The effect of these room mods, as I said, vastly different and can lead to some amazing combinations. But there isn't only runes that affect weapons. Your character also has equipable runes too. These again will drastically change the way in which you play this game. It's a system which is gigantic. And to be honest, the few days I had to play wasn't near enough time to test what I like to test. But in my opinion, from what I experience here and what was on offer within this beta, it's far superior to many of what other looter shooters have offered in regards to actually in-depth build systems which can be unique to itself and the mere fact of how many possibilities are achievable here. Now besides those runes you also have equipment. In the beta it was quite limited I won't lie these four slots behold items that just give you additional HP and defenses and the items we could loot within the beta are basically the same thing for each slot just like an upgraded version of said same item. I do hope we will see a wider variety of items for each slot within the full game which affect your character differently. So loot, one of the main chases in a looter shooter game, that oh so beautiful loot. Now like I said earlier, there seems to be right now three different rarities, rare, epic and legendary. There could be even a couple more below rare and maybe even a tier above a legendary, we don't know this yet. So the loot system in this game to me in regards to drop rates is a lot like Borderlands. Man it drops a lot of loot. And this isn't a bad thing either because obviously not all loot is amazing. In fact a lot of it ain't. But unused loot can be sold and exchanged for materials as you would imagine. Also lost loot goes to your mailbox just in case your inventory is full. But yeah loot drops from multiple places and obviously the harder the challenge the better it gets. So what kind of a challenge awaits you? Well first of all, it's all about levelling up. In the beta the max level was a 40, but this is your overall character level. There was also another level or another rank called mastery ranks, which you could use to earn XP to level up. This I don't think has a limit, well in the beta it definitely didn't. And mastery rank as you upgrade it, upgrades your own slots, capacity and so forth. So very very useful for your build, the more you play, no doubt the more you can do. But in leveling requires you to play the game and play hard. I did not get the feeling that leveling up would be anything quick, nor should it, which I liked. Now leveling can be done in a variety of different ways here. There's actually quite a lot to do, even if it isn't anything unique in doing so, which I will add. The activities and things to do here don't actually feel like anything unique. Again, this isn't a bad thing. It's hard to be unique when everything's already been done. But for me, it's about getting the right recipe, even if it means using the same ingredients. So playing the game levels you up. So what are you expected to do? Firstly, we have a social space called Albion. A lot like the tower within Destiny, it's full of vendors who offer quests, missions, etc, etc. And the main mission giver, for me, within the beta was called Alpha. Now NPCs in this game and the story itself is very outridery. No Oscars or awards uh, for storytelling will be given here, but that doesn't matter. Because it's still pretty fun and it really suits what's going on here. So what is going on? What is there for you to do? Well without spoiling the story, you are sent to areas or locations and what seems to be a pretty big overall map separated into parts to do missions, clear areas and so forth. The game is an open world so to speak, it's more like Destiny with massive open areas but instead here they ain't individual planets and you can't run from one to the other, you have to basically fast travel. The areas within the first ascendant behold many things for you to do. Story missions which reward XP and loot as you would expect, which are repeatable by the way. Horde like activities which consist of up to 21 waves of enemies that get harder and harder. There were other things on the planets too which were seemingly locked within the beta which I believe represent something as a whole on a much bigger scale. And there will be no doubt the inclusion of more public event like activities. So what about endgame? Something extremely important and something many other looters can't seem to get right. Well, within the beta, the endgame activities are called Avoid Intercept Battles. These are four man activities which do match make and are absolutely solid as I believe they should be. What these Void Intercept Battles are, are basically just single boss fights. Bosses that are truly difficult. Within the beta, I believe there was eight or so, all at different levels and the hardest level being a level 55. Considering we were using maxed out characters at a level 40, and we were struggling to beat bosses at a level 30, the level 55 battles will certainly take some doing, which isn't a bad thing. 
I feel these days a lot of games out there just hand things to players where a struggle would be. I miss the days of actually feeling good about achieving something in a game. This gave me that feeling for sure. Now these void intercepts are a real unique way of doing an in-game. I mean I ain't saying it's going to 100% work as I do feel people will be split. I myself prefer those harder mission type activities with a bus at the end but I didn't hate this. This is something I could definitely get used to and it could make to farming a certain bus for that certain loot a little more interesting. So what about microtransactions within this game? Because the game is a free to play game. Microtransactions are definitely coming, but in what form? Well, Nexon have said that any form of pay to win won't be added into the game, and that's a good start. So, how will they make money? Well, there's a currency in the game which I do believe you can purchase, much like silver in Destiny, although exactly where you can use this may change or differ. But I do 100% expect them to add skins into the game as a form of microtransactions, as there's a section for character skins. Plus the fact there's absolutely no armor as I could see, which means we either unlock skins through playing, buy skins via microtransactions or both. But it is early days yet, there's months before this game comes out. So my thoughts on this game after I played this beta. Well I ain't gonna call it the destiny killer because nothing is taking that game's crown, purely for what it's achieved and its longevity. But since Desto, the first descendant for me has been the best looter shooter I've played in years. Anthem was good for about 5 minutes, Outriders was good on and off, Warframe is a great game and still a great game, also another free to play game which is probably most comparable to this one, which isn't a bad thing, but overall I do feel it's taken parts of other loot shooters and rolled them up into one. It does have that feeling of Anthem spliced with a little bit of Warframe and Outriders, it has the loot of Borderlands, it has the feel in regards to scaling level area of Destiny and if I'm honest right now, it's looking like it could actually be and make a good impact in this game's genre. Will it though is another question, many games have looked and even played promising. Nexon do have something good here, something to work upon, something which could deliver. A game I feel many of us are seeking out in regards to that next loot shooter. This indeed could be that. Now the ball's in Nexon's court here, I've seen games on a much larger scale fall flat on their face, but I've also seen the exact opposite happen. And there we have it guys, my thoughts on the first Descendant. Within the hours I put into the beta, it does seem promising, but there's still many many questions to be answered here, and what we have at least 2 or 3 months before this game's release, and a lot can change. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more of the First Descendant, check out my channel. I am posting, I've probably got about 20 odd videos to post on this game from the beta I played in regards to characters, abilities, leveling up builds, the runes, the end game, you name it guys, I've got it covered. So yeah, do check out my channel. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. If you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one